to procure my fall and by the doom of death end woes and all. Merchant of Syracuse, I plead no more. I'm not partial to infringe our laws. The enmity and discord which have late sprung from the rancorous outrage of your duke to merchants, our well-dealing countrymen, who, wanting gilders to redeem their lives, have sealed his rigorous statutes with their blood, excludes all pity from our threatening looks. For since the mortal and intestine jars to thy seditious countrymen and us, it hath, in solemn sentence, been decreed both by the Syracusians and ourselves to admit no traffic to our adverse town. Yes, uh, Nay more. If any born at Ephesus be seen at any Syracusian marts and fairs, again, if any Syracusian born come to the Bay of Ephesus, he dies. His goods confiscate to the Duke's dispose, unless a thousand marks be levied to quit the penalty and to ransom him. Thy substance, valued at the highest rate, cannot amount unto a hundred marks, and therefore, by law, thou art condemned to die. Yet this be my comfort. For when your words are done, my woes end likewise with the evening sun. Well, Syracusian, a same brief the cause why thou departest from my native home, and for what cause thou camest to Ephesus? Heavy a task could not have been imposed than I to speak my griefs unspeakable. In Syracuse was I born, and wed unto a woman, happy but for me. With her I lived in joy. My wealth increased by prosperous voyages, I often took to Epidamia. My spouse, from whom my absence was not six months old, almost a fainting from the pleasing punishment that women bear, had made provisions for her joining me, and soon, and safe, she arrived where I was. There had she not been long, but she became the joyful mother of two goodly sons. <laughs> and, which is strange, the one so like the other as could not be distinguished but by names. That very hour, and in the self-same inn, a mean woman was delivered of such a burden, male twins, both alike. <laughs> but those, when their parents were exceeding poor, I bought, and brought up to attend my sons. My wife, not meanly proud of two such boys, made daily motions for our home return. The unwilling, I agreed. Uh, alas, too soon we came aboard. Oh. Oh. A league from Epidamnum had we sailed before the always wind obeying deep gave any tragic instance of our harm. But longer did we not retain much hope, for what obscured light the heavens did grant it but convey unto our fearful minds a doubtful warrant of immediate death. The sailors sought for safety by our boat and left the ship then sinking right to us. My wife, more careful for the latter born, had tied him to a small spare mast, such as seafaring men provide for sports. And to him, one of the other twins was bound, whilst I was like heedful of the other. The children thus disposed, my wife and I, fixing ourselves at either end of the mast, floated with them towards Corinth as we thought. The seas waxed calm, and we discovered two ships from far, making a main to us, from Corinth flat, and from Epidorus this. But ere they came, let me say no more, gather the sequel by what went before. Nay, forward, old man, do not break off so, for we may pity, though not pardon me. Oh, I the gods done so. For ere the ships could meet for twice five leagues, we were encountered by a mighty rock. It being violently borne upon, our helpful ship was splitting in the midst. Her part, poor soul, seeming as burden, with lesser weight, but not with lesser woe, was carried at a greater speed before the wind. And in our sight, they three were taken up by fishermen of Corinth, as we thought. At length, Another ship had seized on us, and knowing whom it was their hap to say, gave healthful welcome to their shipwrecked guests, and would have wrecked the fishers of their prey had their bark not been very slow of sail. And therefore, homeward did they bend their course. 
Thus have you heard me severed from my bliss. Let my misfortunes my life prolong it, that I may tell sad stories of my own mishaps. And uh, for the sake of them thou sorrow is for, uh, do me the favour to value to full what has befallen them and thee till now. My youngest boy, and yet my eldest care, at eighteen years, became inquisitive after his breath, and importuned me that his attendant, and so his case was like, might bear him company in the quest of him, whom, whilst I laboured of a love to see, I hazarded at the loss of whom I loved. Five summers have I spent in farthest Greece, roaming clean through the bounds of Asia, till coasting homeward came to Ephesus, hopeless to find, yet loath to leave unsought, or that, or, or any place that harbours men. But here must end the story of my life. But happy were I with my timely death, could all my travels warrant me they live. Hapless Aegean, <coughs> who all the fates have marked to bear the extremity of Diomis. Now, trust me, were it not against our laws, against my oath, my crown, my dignity, which princes would they could not disannul, my heart should sue as advocate for thee. But uh, though thou art a judge to the death, and passed sentence may not be recalled, but to our honour's great disparagement, yet will I favour thee in what I can. Therefore, merchant, I will limit thee this day to seek thy health by beneficial help. Ask all the friends thou hast in Ephesus. Beg thou or borrow to make up the sum and live. If not, then thou art doomed to die. <laughs> Jailer. Ducats. Dear! No, my lord. Ducats. Take him to thy custody. Gilders. Oh, I will, my lord. Franks. <laughs> oh, hopeless and helpless that a Gian went, but to procrastinate his lifeless end. <laughs> This very day a Syracusian merchant is apprehended for an arrival here, and not being able to buy out his life, according to the statute of the town, dies ere the weary sun set in the west. There is your money that I had to keep. A go, bear it to the centaur where we host, and stay there, Dromeo, till I come to thee. Within this hour it will be dinner time. Till then, I'll view the manners of the town, peruse the traders, gaze upon the buildings, and then return to sleep within mine inn, for with long travel I am stiff <laughs> and weary. Get thee away. Many a man will take you at your word, and go indeed, having so good a mean. <laughs> <laughs> a trusty villain, sir, and one that very oft, when I am dull with care and melancholy, lightens my humour with his um, merry jests. <laughs> uh, what? Will you walk about the town with me, and then go to my inn and dine with me? Sir, I am invited by certain merchants, sir, for whom I hope to make much benefit. <laughs> I crave your pardon. Soon, at five o'clock, please, you I'll meet with you upon the mart, and afterward consort you till bedtime. My <coughs> present business calls me from you now. Well, well, till then, I will go lose myself and wander up and down to view the city. Sir, I commend you to your own content. He that commends me to my own content <coughs> commends me to the thing I cannot get. For I, to the world, am like a drop of water that in the ocean seeks one other drop, who failing there to find his fellow, for unseen, inquisitive, confounds himself. So I, to find a mother and a brother, in quest of them unhappy, lose myself. Here comes the almanac of my true date. What now? How chance thou art returned so soon? Turn so soon? Why do you approach too late? The cake all burns, the meat falls into the spit. The clock has struck at twelve upon the bell. My mistress makes it one upon my cheek. She is so hot because the meat is cold. The meat is cold because you come not home. You come not home because you have no stomach. You have no stomach. For you have broken your fast. But we who know what is to fast and pray, 
a penitent field of forfeiture die. Then stop in your wind, sir, and tell me this, I pray. Where have you left the money I gave you? <laughs> a sixpence I'll add of Wednesday last, and pay the sack of promise which is proper. <laughs> I gave it to the sacker, sir, I kept it not. <laughs> I am not in a sportive humour now. Tell me, and dally not, where's the money? We being strangers here, how darest thou trust so great a charge from thine own custody? I pray you, sir, jest. Sir, as you sit to dinner, I for my mistress and sent to you post her. If I return, I shall be post indeed, for she shall scour your fault across my plate. And methinks your stomach, like mine, should be your cup and strike you own without a messenger. <laughs> come, Dromeo, come. These jests are out of season. Reserve them till a merrier hour than this. Where is the gold I gave in charge to thee? To me, sir? You gave no gold to me. Come, Sir Knave, have done your foolishness, and tell me how thou hast disposed of thy charge. My charge was to fetch you from the mart, sir, home to your house, the Phoenix, sir, for dinner. My mistress and her sister stays for you there. Now, as I am a Christian man, answer me. In what safe place have you bestowed my money? Or I will break that very sconce of yours that stands on tricks when I am undisposed. Where is the thousand marks thou just had of thee? I have some marks of yours upon my plate, uh, some marks of my mistress's across my shoulders, but not a thousand marks between you both. If perchance I were to repay those to you a worship again, you would not take them patiently. My mistress's marks? What mistress slave hast thou? Your worship's wife. Uh, my mistress at the Phoenix. Uh, she that passed till you come home to dinner and hopes that you will have your home to dinner. Huh? Yeah. Wilt thou flout me thus to my face, being forbid? <laughs> Take thou that, slave, ah, and that. Oh, what, what mean you see? Here, sir, I, I pray you. Oh, hold your hand. Ow! Oh, nay, if, if you will not. Ah, ah, I'll take my heels. Ah. Upon my life, by some device or other, this villain is all wrought of all my money. They say this town is full of cousinage, as nimble jugglers that deceive the eye. Dark-working sorcerers that change the mind. Soul-killing witches that deform the body. Disguised cheaters, prating mountebanks, and other such-like liberties of sin. If it proves so, I'll be gone the sooner. I will to the centaur to seek this slave. I greatly fear my money is not safe. Shall be left. 
Well, I will marry one day. Why don't you try? Here comes your man. Now your husband has died. Say, is your tiny half now at hand? Nay. He's at two hands with me, and that my two ears can witness. Say, just now speak with him. No, it's not his mind. Aye. Aye, he's, he told his mind upon my ear. <laughs> but sure he's happened. I scarcely understand it. Speak he so doubtfully that you cannot clear his meaning. Oh, nay. He's stuck so plainly, I could too well feel his blows. With all so doubtfully, I scarcely understand them. Say, I prithee, is he coming home? It seems he hath great care to please his wife. Uh, my mistress, um, to be sure, my master is, uh, all mad. Called mad, thou villain! Oh, mistress, I mean not, you know, not called mad, but be sure he is stark mad. <laughs> when I did desire him to come home from the mart, he did ask of me a thousand marks in gold. Just dinner time, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. The meat drop burn, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Will you come, quoth I? My gold, quoth he. Where's the thousand marks I gave you, villain? The pig, quoth I, is burned. My gold, quoth he. My mistress, quoth I. Oh, out upon my mistress. I know not thy mistress. Hang up thy mistress. Quoth who? Quoth my master. I know, quoth he, no house, no wife, no mistress. So that my errand due upon my tongue, I thank him. I bear over upon my shoulders, for in conclusion, he did beat me there. Go back again, thou slave, and fetch him home. Go back again. But be you beat no? Of course, so send some other messenger. Back, slave, or I will break thy pate across. Ow! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Oh, and he will place that cross with another beating between you. I shall have a holy head. Hence, prating peasant, fetch thy master home. Oh, ah, oh, oh. am I so bad with you as you with me that like a football you would spur me thus? He will spur me hence, you will spur me hither. Go, oh, if I the last in this service, you should case me in leather. Ah. Because that I do chat with you, 
and use you as my fool. Your sauciness will jest upon my love and make a common of my serious hours. When the sun shines, let foolish gnats make sport, but creep in crannies when he hides his beams. If you will jest with me, know my aspect and fashion your demeanour to my looks, or I will <coughs> beat this method in your skunk. Ow! Skunk's called you, eh? So you bleed battering, I'd rather have it a head. And you use these blokes long, I must get a skunk to my head and then skunk it too. <coughs> or else sit my with my shoulders. Oh, pray, master. What am I beating? Dost thou not know? Nothing, sir, but no, I am beaten. Shall I tell you why? Why, sir, and wherefore? Did I say every wife must have a wherefore? Why, first, for flouting me, and then wherefore, for urging it a second Ow! time to me. Was there never any man thus beaten out of Caesar when in the why and wherefores neither rhyme nor reason? Well, sir, I thank you. Thank me, sir, for what? For there's something that you give me for nothing. I'll make you amends next and give you nothing for something. But say, is it dinner time? No, sir. I think the meat wants what I have. What's that? Basting. Well then, sir, it will be dry. Well then, sir, I pray you eat none of it. Your reason? Well, unless he make you choleric and purchase me another dry basting. <laughs> well, learn to jest in good time. There's a time for all things. Just to deny that before you were so choleric. By what rule? By a rule as plain as the plain ball paper father time himself. Oh, let's hear it. There is no time for a man to recover his hair that grows bald by nature. May he not do so by fine and recovery? Oh, yes, sir. To pay the fine for a periwig and recover the lost hair of another man. Why is time such a niggard of hair? Being as it is, so plentiful an excrement. Ah, because it is a blessing that he hath bestowed on beasts. And what he hath scattered men in hair, he hath given them in wit. This many a man hath more hair than wit. Ah, not a man of those but hath the wit to lose his hair. By what rule? Well, by two, it sound ones two. Name them. Well, the one so that he can save the money that he would spend entirely. The other, so that at dinner time, it should not drop in his porridge. You would all this time have proved there's no time for all things. No, that's what I mean, dear. Time himself is bald, and therefore to the world's end will have bald followers. <laughs> I knew it would be a bald conclusion. <laughs> What's us yonder? <laughs> aye, aye, Antipholus. But strange and proud. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspect. I am not Adriana, nor thy wife. The time was once when thou unurged wouldst thou, and never words or music to thine ear, and never object pleasing in thine eye, and never meet sweet savour to thine taste, unless I spake or looked or parted to thee. How comes it now, my husband? Oh, how comes it? And thou art then a stranger from myself. <laughs> Do not tear thyself away from me. How dearly should it touch thee to the quick, should thou but hear I were licentious. And that this body consecrate to thee, thy ruffian lust should be contaminate. But thou not spit at me and spurn me and hold thy new husband in my face. And tear the stain of skin from my hard brow. And from my full hand cut the wedding ring and break it with a deep divorcing vow. I know thou canst, and therefore see thou do it. I am possessed with an adulterate blot. But if we two be one, and thou play false, I do digest the poison of thy flesh. Being strumpeted then by thy contagion, keep them fairly and truth with thy true bed. I live unstained, and thou undishonoured. Plead you to me, fair dame. I know you not. In Ephesus I am but two hours old, as strange unto your town as to your talk, which every word, with all my wit being scanned, Wants wit in all one word to understand. Fie, brother! How the world is changed for you! Why were you want to use my sister thus? She sent for you by Dromeo, home for dinner. By Dromeo? By me! By thee! And this thou didst return from him, that he did buffet thee and in his clothes and I my house for his, me for his wife. <laughs> did you converse, sir, with this gentlewoman? 
What is the course and drift of your compact? Oh, sir, I never saw her till this time. Oh, villain, thou liest. For even her very words <laughs> thou didst deliver to me upon the mart. I never spake with her in all my life. How can she then thus call us by our names? Unless it be by inspiration. <laughs> I will agree with your gravity to counterfeit thus grossly with your slave, abetting him to thwart me in my mood. Be it my wrong, or from me exempt, but wrong not that wrong with a more contempt. Come, I will fasten on this sleeve of thine. Thou art an elm, my husband, I of thine, whose weakness, married to thy strong estate, makes with thy strength to communicate. <laughs> to me she speaks. She moves me for her theme. What? Was I married to her in my dream? Or sleep by now, and think I hear all this. What error drives our eyes and ears amiss? Until I know this sure uncertainty, I'll entertain the offered fallacy. At Dromeo, go with the servants fed for dinner. Oh, for my beads. They cross me for a sinner. Oh, this is a fairy land. Oh, spire, spite. We talk with goblins, owls, and sprites. If we obey them not, this will ensue the suck our breath, the picture's black and blue. Why pratest thou to thyself and answerest not? Romeo! Thou, Romeo! Thou snail, thou snail, thou <laughs> <laughs> I am transforming, Master! Have not I? I think I have in mine, and so am I. Oh, not only in mine, but in my shape. <laughs> thou hast thine own form. No! No! I am an ape! If thou art changed to aught, tis to an ass. Oh, tis true, she rides me and I long for grass. Tis so, I am an ass. Else it could never be that I should know her as well as she knows me. Come, come. No longer will I be a fool to put the finger in the eye and weep. Was man and master last my woes to scorn. Come, sir, to dinner. Adromeo, keep the gate. Husband, I'll dine above with you today and try you with a thousand idle pranks. And Sir, if any ask you for your master, say he dines forth and let no creature enter. Come, sister. Dromeo, play the porter well. Am I in earth, in heaven, or in hell? <laughs> Sleeping or waking? Mad or well advised? Known unto these, and to myself disguised? <laughs> well, I'll say as they say, and persevere so, and in this mist, at all adventures go. Uh, master, shall I be porter at the gate? Aye, and let none enter, lest they break your pates. Come, come, Antipolis, we dine too late. <laughs> My good cheer and your good welcome, yeah? <laughs> a small cheer and great welcome makes for a merry feast. Aye, to a niggardly host and a more sparing guest, although my cakes be mean, they are meant in good part. You may receive better welcome, but not with better heart. <laughs> <laughs> but soft, uh, I do also love to me. Go, bid them let us in. Mount, Bridget, Marion, Cecily, Gillian, Jean! <laughs> Moan! More horse, cape on! Cox comedian patch! Either get thee away or sit down at the hatch! Does thou conjure for wenches when thou callest such door? When one is one too many, go get thee from the door! Look, patch, he's made our porter! My master stays in the street! Oh, let him walk from whence he came, lest he catch cold on his feet! Oh, who talks with him? Come open this door! Aye, sir, I'll tell you when, you tell me wherefore! Wherefore? For dinner I've got 
I'm dying today. Not today, or you must not come again when you may. Who is this that keeps me from the house of I.O.? The porter for this time, sir. And my name is Dromeo. <laughs> oh, thou villain! Now I've stolen by my office and my name. The one near got me credit, the other mickle blame. If today thou hast been thrown me out in my place, they will change my face for a name and my name for an ass. What a coil there is, Dromeo. Who are those at the gate? Oh, oh, let my master in loose. Speak though, he comes too late, and so tell your master. Oh, Lord, I must laugh. Shall I sit at him with a problem? Shall I sit in my stuff? You have a deal with another, and that's when, can you tell? <laughs> if thy name be called loose, loose thou have answered him well. How <laughs> many of thou come? Let us in, I trow. Oh, I thought to have asked you. And you said no. So come. <laughs> Well struck, here's blow for blow. Come, let me in. Can you tell for whose sake? Master, knock the door out. I'll let him knock till it ache. Now, baggage, let me in! <laughs> what needs all this? And a pair of stocks in the town. Who is that at the door that keeps all this noise? Uh, by my troth, your town is troubled with unruly boys. Are you there, wife? You may have come before. Your wife, sir, nay. Go get you from the door. Here is neither cheer nor welcome, sir. We would fain have either. The debate of which was best, we shall part with neither. Master, they spend that side. Bid them welcome me there. There is something in the wind we cannot get in. You would say so, their garments were thin. Your cake is warm within. You stand here in the cold. He would make a man as mad as a buck to be so bought and sold. I'll break it. I'll break down this gate. Break any break in here and I'll break your knave's pates. A man may break a word with you, sir, for a word is but wind. I am to break it in your face, so as you not break it behind. <laughs> it seems thou want his breaking out upon thee, hind. Oh, there's too much out upon thee. I pray thee, let me in. Ay, oh, when fowl have no feather and fish have no fin. Go borrow me a crow. <laughs> I come now, Benson. Mean you so? For every fish without a fin, there's a fowl without a feather. If a crow gets in, sir, we'll pluck a crow together. Go get thee gone and fetch me an iron crow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, have patience, sir. Oh, let it not be so. Herein will be war against your reputation. Draw within the compass of suspect the unviolated honour of your wife. What's this? Your long experience of her wisdom, her sober virtues, years, and modesty, clean in her parts and cause to you unknown. And doubt not but she will well excuse why at this time the doors are made against you. Be ruled by me, and depart in patience, and let us all to the tiger to dinner. And about evening come yourself and let us know the reason of this strange estate. If by strong hand you offer to break in now in the stirring passage of the day, a vulgar comment will be made of it, and that supposed by the common rout against your yet involved <coughs> estimation, that may with foul intrusion enter in and dwell upon your grave when you are dead. For all slander lives upon succession, and over housed is where it gets possession. Mary, I know a woman of excellent discourse in the town, pretty, witty, wild, and yet uh, too gentle. To her we will dinner. So, go and get you home, and bring to me the, the chain to the porcupine, but there is the house. But that chain will I bestow upon my hostess there, and, <coughs> and nothing else but to spite my wife. For if my own doors refuse to entertain me, I will knock elsewhere and see if they will entertain me. <laughs> I'll meet you at that place an hour ahead. Do so, do so. This jest will cost me some expense. <laughs>
brings rot? Can love in building grow so ruinous? If thou didst wait my sister for her wealth, then for her wealth's sake use her with more kindness. Or if you like elsewhere, do it by stealth. Muffle your false love with some show of blindness. Did not my sister read it in your eyes? Be not thy tongue, my own shame's orator. Look sweet, speak fair, become disloyalty. Apparel vice like virtue's harbinger. Bear a fair presence, though your heart be tainted. Teach sin the courage of a holy saint. Be secret false, what need she be acquainted? What civil thief boast of his own a taint? Tis double wrong to trope with thy bed, and then to let her read it in their looks at thought. Shame have a bastard brain well managed, an ill deed is doubled with a wrong word. Then, gentle brother, get you in again. Comfort my sister, cheer her, call her wife. Tis holy sport to be a little vain when the sweet breath of flattery conquers strife. Sweet mistress, what your name is else I know not, nor by what wonder you do hit of mine, lest in your knowledge and your grace you show not than our earth's wonder more than earth divine. Teach me, dear creature, how to think and speak. Lay open to my earthy, gross conceit, smothered in errors, feeble, shallow, weak, the folded meaning of your words deceit. <coughs> Against my soul's pure truth, why labor you to make it wander in some unknown field? Are you a god? Would you create me new? Transform me then, and to your power I'll yield. <laughs> but if that I am I, then well I know your weeping sister is no wife of mine, nor to her bed no homage do I owe. <laughs> father, <laughs> father, to you do I decline. Oh, train me not, mermaid, with thy note to drown me in thy sister's flood of tears. Sing, siren for thyself. And I will dote, spread on the silver waves your golden hairs, and as a bed I'll take them, and there lie. And in this glorious supposition think, he gains by death that hath such means to die. Let love, being light, be drowned as she sink. Are you mad that you do reason so? Not mad, but mated. How? I do not know. It is a fault that springeth from your eyes. For gazing on your beams, fair son, being by. Well, gaze where you should, that will clear your sight. As good to wink, sweet love, as look on night. Why call you me, love? Call my sister so. Thy sister's sister. That's my sister. No, it is thyself, my own self's better part. My eyes clear eye, my dear heart's dearer heart, my food. My fortune and my sweet hope's aim, my soul earth's heaven and my heaven's claim. All this my sister is, or else should be. Call thyself sister sweet, for I am thee. Thee will I love, and with thee spend my life. Thou hast no husband yet, and I no wife. Give me thy hand. Oh, stop, sir, hold you still. I will go fetch my sister to her, get her goodwill. <laughs> now, now, Romeo, where runnest thou so fast? Do you know me, sir? Am I Dromeo? Am I your man? Am I myself? <sighs> thou art Dromeo. <laughs> thou art my man. Thou art thyself. I'm an ass. I'm a woman's man, and besides myself. <laughs> What woman's man? And how besides thyself? Besides myself, I am due to a woman! One that claims me, one that haunts me, one that will have me! <laughs> what, 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 what claim lays she to thee? Oh, Mary, sir, such a one as you would lay to your horse, and she would have me as a beast! Not that I, being a beast, she would have me, but that she, being a most beastly creature, lays claim to me. And what is she? Oh, you very reverend body. Oh, such a one as a man may not see her without his say Sir Reverence. I have but lean luck in the match, and yet she is a wondrous fat marriage. 
What dost thou mean, a fat marriage? Oh, she's the kitchen wench. <laughs> An old grease. And I know not what use to put her to, but to make a lamp of her and run from her by her own light. <laughs> I warrant her rags and a tallowin and would burn a Poland winter. If she lives till doomsday, she'll burn a wheat log in the old world. <laughs> What complexion is she of? Swart, like my shoe. But her face is nothing like so clean kept. But why? <laughs> she sweats. Like a man may go over shoes in the grime of it. Well, that's a fault that water will mend. Oh, no, sir. Tis in grain. Noah's flood couldn't do it. Romeo! <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? L, sir. But her name and three quarters, that's an L and three quarters, could not measure her from hip to hip. So she bears some breath. Oh, she's no longer from hip to foot than she is from hip to hip. <laughs> she's spherical, like a globe. I could find out countries in her. In what part of her body stands Ireland? Mary, sir. In her buttocks. I found it out by the box. Well, where? Where's Scotland? I found it in the baroness hard in the palm of her hand. Where France? In her forehead, armed and reverted, making war against her ear. Where England? Ah, well, I looked for the chalky cliffs. I could find no whiteness in them. Maria, I think it stood in her chin by that great salt room that ran between France and it. Where? Spain. Oh, fate, sir. I saw it not, but I uh, felt it hot in her breath. Where? America. The Indies. In her nose. All over, em embellished with rubies and carbuncles and sapphires, all declining their rich aspect to the hot breath of Spain. Who sent all our mardos and carracks to be ballast at her nose? Where stood Belgium, the Netherlands? <laughs> oh, sir, I did not look so low. <laughs> <laughs> but to conclude, this drudge or diviner laid claim to me, called me Dromeo, swore I was assured to her. She told me the privy marks I have about me, like the mark on my shoulder, the mole on my neck, the wart on my um, left arm, that I am amazed, banned from her as a witch. And I think that if my wrist had not been made of fate and my heart of steel, she'd have transformed me to a curled dog to turn in the wheel. Go, hie thee presently, post to the road. If the wind blows any way from shore, I will not harbour in this town tonight. If any bark put forth, come to the mart where I will walk till thou return to me. If everyone knows us and we know none, it is time, I think, to trudge, pack, and be gone. As from a pair a man would run for life, so fly I from her that would be my wife. <laughs> There's none but witches to inhabit here, and therefore it is high time that I were hence. She that doth call me husband, even my very soul, doth for a wife of whore. But her fair sister, possessed of such a gentle sovereign grace, of such enchanting presence and discourse, hath almost made me traitor to myself. But lest myself be guilty of self-wrong, I'll stop my ears against this mermaid's song. Master Timberlands! Aye, that's my name. I know it well, sir. Lo, here's the chain. I thought to have taken you at the porcupine, and the chain unfinished made me stay thus long. Uh, what is your will that I shall do with this? What well, please yourself, sir. I have made it for you. Made it for me, sir? But I bespoke it not. <laughs> not once, not twice, but twenty times you have. Now go home with it and please your wife with all. And soon at supper time, I'll come visit you and then receive my money for the chain. Yeah, I pray you, sir, receive the money now, for fear you ne'er see chain nor money more. <laughs> oh, merry man, sir, fare you well. <laughs>
what I should think of this? I cannot tell. But this I think, there is no man so vain that would refuse so fair a proper shape. I see a man here need not live by shifts, but in the streets he meets such golden gifts. I will to the mart, and there for Dromeo stay. But if any ship puts out, then straight away. <laughs> Oh, sir. 
There is a bark of epidamnum that stays but till her owner comes aboard and then she bears away. Uh, I've brought you, sir, I've conveyed aboard. I've brought the uh, oil, the balsamum, the aqua vitae. The ship is in her trim. The merry wind blows fair from land and she stays for naught at all, master, but her owner and yourself. <laughs> Now, thou peevish sheep, what ship of Epidamnum stays upon me? The ship that you sent me for, sir, to our waftage. I sent thee for a rope's end and told thee to what end and what purpose? You sent me for a rope's end as soon. You sent me to the bank, sir, for a bark. Uh, uh, <laughs> we will debate this more ere long, and I will teach thee to list with more care. Now, all to Adriana. Take her this key. Tell her that in the desk that is covered over with the Turkish tapestry there is a purse of ducats. Uh, tell her that I am arrested in the street and that will pay my bail. <laughs> Hi, thee home, villain! Hold on, sir, on to prison till it come. To Adriana? Oh, oh that is where we dined! Oh, where Dowsabelle did claim me for her husband. Oh, she's too big, I hope, for me to compass. Oh, whither I must, though against my will, the servants must their master's minds fulfil. <laughs> There's 
not a man I meet, but to salute me as their well-acquainted friend. And everyone just call me by my name. Some tender money to me, some invite me, some give me thanks for kindnesses, some offer me commodities to buy. Even now, a tailor called me in his shop and showed me silks that he had bought for me, and therewithal took measure of my body. Sure, these are but imaginary wiles, and Lapland sorcerers inhabit here. Master, it is a goldy symbol. <laughs> Have you got the picture of old Adam new apparel? What gold is this? What Adam dost thou mean? Oh, not that Adam that kept the paradise, but that Adam that keeps the prison. He that goes in the calfskin that was killed for the prodigal. Uh, the man, sir, that, that came up behind you like an evil angel and bid you forsake your liberty. I understand thee not. No, oh, sir. Um, what's his plain case? He that went like a base vial in a case of leather. Well, man, sir, that like when gentlemen are tired, gives them a sock and rests them. He takes pity on decayed men and gives them soups of durance and sets up his rest to do more exploits with a mace than a Morris pike. What? Thou meanest an officer? Aye, sir. <laughs> the sergeant of the band. He that brings any man to answer him that should break his band. The man, sir, that keeps men always going to bed and says, God give you good rest. Uh, well, there, sir, rest in your foolishness. And tell me this, is there any ships put forth? May we be gone. Master, I, I brought you word an hour since that the bark expedition put forth tonight. And then you were hindered by the sergeant to tarry for the high delay. Look, here are the angels that he sent forth to deliver you. The fellow is distract, and so am I. And here we wander in illusions. Some blessed power deliver us from hence. Well met, well met, Master Antipolis. I see, sir, you found the goldsmith now. Is that the chain you promised me today? Satan, avoid, I charge thee, and tempt me not. Master, is this mistress Satan? It is. The devil. No, no, it is worse. It is the devil's dam. And here she comes in the habit of a light wench. And so it is that when she say, God damn me, that's as much as to say, God make me a light wench. It is written that they appear to men like angels of light. Light is an effect of fire and fire will burn. Ergo, light wenches will burn. <laughs> Come not nearer. <laughs> Your man and you are marvellous, Mary, sir. Will you... Go with me. We'll mend our dinner here. Uh, master, if you do, expect <coughs> spoon me, or else bespeak a long spoon. <laughs> Why, Dromeo? Oh, Mary, sir, he must have a long spoon that should eat with the devil. <laughs> Satan, avoid. Why tellest thou me of supping? Thou art, as you all are, a sorceress. I charge thee, leave me and tempt me not. Give me the ring of mine you had at dinner, <coughs> my diamond, the chain you promised, and I'll be gone, sir, and not trouble you. Some devils are spot the parings of one's nail, a rush of hair, a, a, a drop of blood, a pin, a nut, a cherry stone. But she, more covetous, would have a chain, master. Be wise, and if you give it her, the devil will shake her chain and fright us with it. <laughs> I pray you, sir, my ring, or ask the chain. I hope you do not mean to cheat me so. Avoid now, witch. Come, Dromeo, let us go. Fly pride, says the peacock, mistress. That you know! <laughs> now, out of doubt, Antipolis is mad. Else he never would so demean himself. The ring he hath of mine worth forty ducats, and for the same he promised me a chain. Both one another he denies me now. The reason that I gather he is mad, beside this present instance of his rage, is of a mad tale he talked today at dinner. Own doors being shut against his entrance. Belike his wife, the 
acquainted with the spits on purpose shut the doors against his way. My way now is to hie home to his house and tell his wife that being lunatic, he rushed into my house and took perforce my ring away. This course I fit his choose for forty ducats is too much to lose. <laughs> Uh, part of the goodwill you might, but uh, not a rag of money. 
Wintest not thou to her for a purse of ducats? He came to me and I delivered it. And I am witness with her that she did. <laughs> Go to the road, make a pair me with you. I was sick for nothing but ever! <laughs> Mistress, both man and master is possessed. I know it by their pale and deadly looks. They must be bound and laid in some dark room. <laughs> why did thou lock me forth today? And why dost thou deny me a bag of gold? I did not, gentle husband, lock thee forth. And I, the gentle master, had no gold. But I will confess that we were not tapped. Dissembling villain, thou speakest false in truth. Dissembling harlot, thou didst false in all. A confederate with a damned pack to make an abject scorn of me. I will pluck out those eyes that see such shameful sport of me! Oh, bind him, bind him, and do not come near me! Oh, 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 God! Oh, 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 thou jailer, thou! Wilt thou suffer me? Wilt thou make an escape? But the masters, let him go. He is my prisoner, and you shall not have him. Come bind his man, for he is frantic too! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> what wilt thou do, thou peevish officer? It's a delight to see a wretched man do outrage and displeasure to himself. He is my prisoner. If I let him go, then the debt owed will be required of me. I will discharge thee ere I go from thee. Okay. Let me forth with him to his creditor, and, knowing how the debt grows, I will pay it. Good master doctor, see him safe conveyed home to my house. Oh, most unhappy day. Well, most unhappy harlot! Oh. Uh, master, I'm entered here in bum for you. Oh, will thou still talk? Why dost thou still mad me? <laughs> will I be bound for nothing? Uh, be mad, good master. Cry the devil! Devil, 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 devil. <laughs> Imprisonment, you have done wrong to this, my honest friend. 
Who <laughs> but for staying on our controversy had hoisted sail and put to sea today? This chain you had of me. Can you deny it? I think I did. I never did deny it. Oh! Yes, that you did, sir. And forswore it too. <laughs> Who heard me to deny it or forswear it? Ah! These ears of mine thou knowest did hear me. Fie on thee, wretch. Tis pity that thou livest to walk where any honest men resort, eh? <laughs> Thou art a villain to impeach me thus. I'll prove my honour and my honesty to thee presently, if thou darest stand. <gasps> oh. I dare, and you defy thee for a villain. <laughs> oh! Think 
the dial points at five. And then I'm sure the Duke himself in person comes this way to the melancholy vale, the place of death and sorry execution behind the ditches of the abbey. Ian. <laughs> ah, to see a reverend Syracusian merchant who put unluckily into this bay, beheaded publicly for his offence. See where he comes. We will behold his death. Kneel to the Duke before he passed the abbey. <laughs> 